afternoon, everybody. This is Dee Reinhart with Illinois WorkNet. I'm filling in for Natasha Tugger today. And we have the call started. So, Aaron, if you'd like to take over. Yeah, I'll go ahead and start. And then, Cody, have you got some updates for the WorkNet for this afternoon? I do have some tools that have been updated that I can share my screen and show everybody, yes. Fantastic. Guys, you you, um, you probably don't realize this, but it's uh, really a privilege to have Cody with us this afternoon. I, uh, I know that Cody is the one who implements a lot of the work that Natasha and I dream up. So we, we come up with things that we think will work for the Illinois WorkNet, and Cody actually takes those ideas and uh, and, and basically creates them in a uh, in a real reality for us, so that they actually have uh, functionality to them. So um, it's it's really a privilege to get to have Cody on the call with us today, and we've really appreciated all of his work all throughout the year. You know, it's it's been uh, an interesting year for sure. That. Um, we, we got a late start with the program. We didn't get started until November. FY19 is going to be a lot different. We're going to be going on day one. And so I'm really optimistic that FY19 is going to have a, a much better flow to it. We have also um, put in a lot of work on the front end of, with the Illinois WorkNet. So the idea is that those tools that we have been kind of, uh, you know, building the airplane as we're flying it, um, those tools will be in place for FY19 for us to use from the get-go. So we'll be able to enter the youth, we'll be able to track their progress, work with them on case plans in the system, all kinds of things like that. So I've appreciated your diligence uh, as providers in sticking with us so that we can make sure that we make the work net as functional as possible to be able to help the youth and to be able to provide some accountability and some data for our program. So that's been fantastic. Still working on um, budgets for FY19. That's the that's uh, the biggest thing that's going right now. Um, the reason I don't have more of those done at the moment is because uh, I'm actually still wrapping up some FY18 budget revisions. So if any of your programs need budget revisions for FY18, I believe it is still possible to do those, but uh, time is getting short on those. Um, so I'm still working with several providers to finish some that they've already proposed and are in progress. But uh, I got a, um, some questions from providers still about whether or not they could revise their budget. The answer is yes. And uh, keep in mind, um, I've also had some questions about discretionary line item transfers. And basically, all that is is um, it's it's the play that you have within your budget. So the budget numbers are locked in. However, you have some discretion to vary from those numbers. And again, the limit by which you can vary is the greater of either 10% or $1,000. So um, if you overspend a line by up to 10% or $1,000, whichever is greater, you can do that. And we will still approve your expenditure documentation form, and it won't be a problem. Um, you have to keep in mind that if you overspend in one line item, you're going to have to underspend somewhere else. You're going to have to essentially be moving those funds from one line item to another. As long as you're within that 10% or $1,000 framework, you don't need to do a formal budget revision. Um, it, that, that is the discretionary line item transfer, meaning you can do that at your discretion and you don't need approval. I, I want to reiterate this also as we come to the end of the fiscal year. Um, that your, your fiscal year funding for FY19 does not depend on you expending all of your funds in FY18. It is okay if you have not spent all of your FY18 funds. I want to reiterate that one more time. It is okay if you have not spent all of your FY18 funds. Um, what we do not want to see is uh, sometimes at the end of the fiscal year, people will um, invent things to spend money on because they want to spend down those funds. Um, and that's not necessary. We, we ask you to definitely spend the funds as you need them, but um, there's no need to feel any sense of urgency to spend funds if you really don't have a purpose for them. If you don't have a purpose that is reasonable and necessary, those kinds of expenses um, will be disallowed. And I only bring this up because I know last year we had a couple of providers, um, one of them that's, that's not a provider anymore, uh, somewhat because of this, that um, that 
in, in the months of May and June, spent out maybe 80% of their grant dollars. That's okay to do if you are primarily serving youth um, and that you have a, a reasonable um, need to spend those funds. For example, because youth are out of school, you're going to put a lot more services into youth in, in the month of May and June maybe. I understand that, but a lot of the charges in that particular case were, were charges that had no reasonable purpose um, in the months of May and June. So be sure as you are wrapping up your grants that all of your expenses are, keywords, are reasonable and necessary. That right. the way you're spending them is, is reasonable and necessary. So um, when it comes to uh, contract language for FY19, I did talk to my, my boss about the contract language and the exhibits for FY19. And until those contracts are published, um, I can't confirm one way or the other what the contract exhibits are going to say um, with 100% with certainty. I anticipate um, what I anticipated last uh, meeting that we had, our last webinar. My, my anticipation is that the, the payment structure will change a little bit in FY19. I anticipate that you will get a larger upfront payment at the beginning of the year However, to be clear, I expect that um, at, after um, that initial larger prospective payment, that future payments will be based on a reimbursement schedule, meaning you will have to expend the funds first and then get paid back for those funds. So again, I uh, just wanted to be clear on some of that. I don't know that. for certain, but that's what I anticipate. So as some of you prepare, that's something that I would definitely recommend you look at when you get your, your FY19 contracts, which will hopefully be coming soon. So as we, uh, as we get those FY19 contracts published, be sure to read through those carefully, pay special attention to Exhibit C, as in Charlie. That is where the payment terms are laid out, and so I want to make sure that all providers are really clear on the way that they're going to be paid uh, moving forward in FY19, okay? I think that's about all I have. Cody, if you want to discuss some of the things that are new for the WorkNet. Uh, okay, I, I did. Oh, go ahead, Dee. Cody, do you want to leave? The, do you want to pull the share screen down enough so that we can see the chat pod in case somebody's not on the phone that wants to ask a question? Yes. I can't grab it and move it for some reason. Uh, if you if you click on there you go. All right, but now now we need to make it just big enough. I'll I'll move it. Okay. All right. And then if you want to make your screen bigger on the screen, like your percentage bigger, maybe about 150 typically, on the browser, yeah. Okay. Can there you, see you go. It? That's good. That's good. And then okay. if anybody needs to see the screen more and you are on the webinar right now, there are the four arrows at the top of this pod that you can make it full screen if you'd like to see it even better. Okay. Um, I am going to start with the PPR reports. Uh, a few... updates we have made are we did add info bubbles to each line so that you can now see the info bubbles. It will tell you what type of what is being measured in that line and the goal for each line. And each uh, blue heading should have an info bubble to be able to tell you that. Uh, another update we made, uh, we are now color coding the uh, performance rows. As you can see, the red will be off track. If you have met your goal, you will be yellow and you will be on track. And at the end of the year, if you have met your goal, uh, the line will turn to green and it will say completed. And that is the same for all uh, four of the performance reports. Uh, another update is we included an export button here. 
this will download to an Excel sheet all of the numbers and the quarter so that you will be able to print that out and do whatever um, you need to. And down at the bottom, it will print out all four of the tabs. So you have your enrollment tab, your assessment tab, ISTEP tab, and the worksite placement tab as well. Um, those are all of the updates for the reports. We do have a few updates to the progress page um, in the performance deliverable progress right here. We have included the ISTEP uh, performance measures. So you can see here this customer uh, has a case plan, no, has a case plan that includes college and career plan, no, and then was the youth re-engaged in education, no. These will line up to your ISTEP report, which you can see would be right here. So customers who have an individualized case plan, we don't have any right now. And on the progress page, you will be able to see what customers should be showing in that uh, performance line. And the final update we have is the customer view of the ISTEP. Customers will now be able to log into their account and view their ISTEP um, as you are updating it. So on the first page here, we have their skills and interests. They will be able to view a read-only um, of their application. They cannot change anything, but they will be able to see what they answered on their application for employment goals, um, their education level, and any credentials that they may have entered on their application and then their employment-related information, barriers that they may have selected or that you have selected on the ISTEP. And then they will be able to see any assessments that have been entered for them as well, including Employment 101, their observational evaluations, or worksite evaluations. On the second tab, they will be able to see all of the plans and goals that have been entered for them. Um, the goals are here with a status of on track, off track, or complete. They can show and hide the steps that uh, are added for that goal. And they will be able to see the start date and end date for those steps as well. And finally, the accomplishments tab, you will be able to, they will be able to see um, completed goals and services once they have been marked as completed in the ISTEP. Uh, the last tab are, is job leads, and these are links to um, other pages in Illinois WorkNet where they can, we have the job finder, job link, and then featured employers in Illinois WorkNet. Finally, Cody, we have, Cody, oh, the, yes. Do the featured employers is that the page where the featured employers post job openings? Yes, it is. OK. And finally, we do have a print button. Um, the customer can print any of the pages. They do have to print uh, one by one. We do not print all of the pages at one time. So they would have to print each page by itself. And then we have the agreement along with the signature lines at the bottom. Those are all of the updates I have for this week. Does I think those look pretty sharp. Um, sorry, do you, what was do that? Do you have any questions about any of those? Looks like Cynthia might have a question. As she types, I was going to say um, it, it's really nice to see all this coming together um, as 
The, the idea is, again, we've been saying this from the very beginning, the purpose of all of this is to, uh, is, is kind of twofold when it comes to the work net. One, you know, the primary purpose is to better serve the youth that we have. So as we build these tools, um, the idea is to help us keep track of the, uh, the youth's progress and to document that. But then the, the, the second part really is for some accountability. It helps us to be able to demonstrate what it is that the community youth employment is doing for the youth that we serve. And uh, being able to demonstrate the importance of the program is going to be key to the uh, sustainability of the program long term. So getting that information into the Illinois WorkNet accurately really helps. And I appreciate the, the work. I, it's exciting to see um, as it's, as it's almost fully developed, it'll be great because, again, all of these things, all of these tools will be here for FY19 and um, can be effective there at the beginning of the year so that our FY19 work um, can be that much better. So if there aren't any other questions, I think that's all that we've got for today. Um, and Dee and Cody, I appreciate your help for this afternoon to, to cover these things. I would encourage people to continue to um, make sure that even if you're if you're getting new youth here near the end of the year, that we're still uh, enrolling them in the work net, that you're trying to kind of clean up data as much as possible. So if you've got youth that are in there but they haven't been able to complete certain parts, that you're doing your best to do that. You're making sure that you're following up with youth who have been on the job and you're doing things like um, the, uh, the, the follow-up um, to check to see if they're still employed or if they're not employed, that you're working with them employers to complete the, um, the participant termination reports. And so those are all things that we can be doing kind of as we wrap up FY18 and move into FY19. All right? Guys, can we bring the, the poll back, by the way? We always have our, our attendance poll just in case we had anybody join um, afterwards. If you haven't already uh, logged in that, that you're here, please go ahead and do that. And, uh, and otherwise, we'll, we'll just leave it open for just a little bit longer. But otherwise, um, that will wrap us up for today, okay? All right. Thanks. Thank you. Have a great rest of your day, everybody.